Hi, this is Jack from Alpha Charts, and today we're going to do an educational video on how to select stocks from a top down approach. Before we get started, this is not a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. This is for informational purposes only. All right, so we've heard a lot of people talk about a top down approach, but what does that really mean? Okay, so here is how I define it. So I take the market, right? We'll call it the S&P, the Qs, the market. And then we start to drill it down into sector, subsector, the individual stock. And we're looking for outperformance, right? So we could all buy S&Ps and we can all make whatever the S&P makes per, per year, average 10%, whatever. But we're looking for outperformance if we're trading and swing trading stocks. So, um, so that is the purpose of a top-down approach. And so we're going to um, go through uh, my process. Today is December 10th, 2019, um, intramarket. And we are going to um, kind of show you how I do it. So first things first, we need to define our time frame, right? Markets are fractal, so this will work on any time frame. But I think defining the time frame is the first thing we have to do. And then we have to define what do we call... Um, an uptrend or, or a trend, right? For me, my time frame, I am a week to month swing trader, right? So I'm using a little bit longer of a time frame. This is the 65 day EMA. This is the 150 day EMA. This is how I define trend, okay? Medium trend, long term trend. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, what are we looking for? I need to find the trend of the market. The trend of the market right now, and I'm going to use the S&P as, um, as my default use uh, market, okay? It's going to be the S&P. And so my trend is up, okay? So we know we have a market that is trending higher. There's nothing bearish about this market right now at all as of today, all right? So now that we know that the market's higher, now we need to look at each sector within the S&P and decide if how it compares to the market. Now, I like to change this to a line chart because I think it helps me define, um, helps me see it better, actually. All right, so the numerator will be each sector. So here, we'll start with energy and definitely not outperforming the S&P. So I am not interested in energy. Moving on, financials. Financials, I see an uptrend here. I'm interested in financials, write it down. All right, moving on to industrials. Industrials, nope, looks like a downtrend to me, not interested. Again, I'm looking for things that are going from the bottom left to the top right. Let's look at technology, and that's perfect bottom left to top right. Definitely uptrend, write it down. Next up is healthcare. And in healthcare, now you can see this was a downtrend here, right? But now look at this. The trend is changing. I'm running down healthcare. I think that's a, you know, it's starting a new uptrend at this point until that changes. So write it down, healthcare. Discretionaries. Discretionaries, downtrend. Move on. Um, next up is going to be communications. Now, communications relative to the S&P, no trend. I call this trendless. Not interested in trendless. Move on. Utilities. Utilities are, looks like the trend, trend was kind of up over here. Um, and now it's back down. So not interested. Moving on to staples. Staples, mm, at best, trendless at this point. So not interested. Materials are downtrend, not interested. And last but not least, real estate. Real estate was an uptrend, trend has changed, not interested. All right, so there's three sectors that I'm interested in right now. Financials, technology, healthcare. All right, so now what we need to do is drill it down to the subsectors. But now instead of the SPX being our world of stocks, we want XLF to be the denominator. 
and each subsector that I'm going to look at will be the numerator. So we'll start with regional banks. And regional banks is in a downtrend right now, so not interested. We'll look at the financial services. Financial services are in uptrend. Very interested in this, right? Let's look at KIE. Downtrend. Looking at I downtrend and I also like to look at iPay here um, for the newer financial type products out there uh, and this to me is in a downtrend also okay so now I am very interested in IYG I look at my notes there IYG and IYG chart yeah that looks beautiful right we had a nice consolidation and we had broke out and actually this is one of my favorite charts Go back. I'll just put it on a monthly chart real fast. Look at look how it broke out of this huge level, dating all the way back to 07. Huge level. But I just wanted to. So there we go. It's an uptrend. So now what are we going to do? We are going to now have to look at um, each individual stock. I like to look at least the top 10 uh, stocks. So I'm going to go to the um, iShares homepage, which um, will give me everything it will give me everything right every every equity but i like to look at least at the largest weightings and for this video we'll just do the top five or six so i'm looking for something now that is at a buy point okay and we'll switch it back to um some candles uh so i'm looking for a buy point here okay uh jp morgan was first on that list big weighting um, I like the consolidation. It already broke out. So as of today, it's not at a buy point. All right. Just so you guys know, full disclosure, I am already along JP Morgan and Citi um, in the list of things I'm going over today. Uh, Visa. Here's Visa. Now Visa, uptrend, consolidation. And so, yeah, so this is, has a nice consolidation and it would be above you know, in my opinion above this 184 50 ish it could potentially be a nice buy so i'm writing that one down and then bank of america nice big uptrend consolidation um in my opinion probably needs a little bit more time here so not that interested mastercard mastercard looks a lot like visa actually uptrend sideways consolidation um, I do like this one potentially over 292, 293-ish. Looking good there. So Visa, MasterCard, both look good to me right now. Um, Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo looks a lot like that Bank of America chart. Big run-up, consolidation, may need some more time. So I'm not totally interested in Wells Fargo. And we'll look at Citi. Now Citi had the big run-up, consolidation, but it looks to be, in my opinion, maybe a little further along in that consolidation. Maybe not. But I am already along this one. Um, over 76 and a quarter-ish. And I think that uh, that this one continues higher. Um, yeah, so that's that's how I look at it. So I take my galaxy of stocks. For me, that's the S&P for this video at least. And then I'm going to drill down to the sectors. Then I'm going to compare the subsector to the outperforming sectors. And we do that for each one of them. So like for this one, financials, um, technology, and healthcare all looked good to me. So I'm gonna do this drill down for all of them and find out which subsector is really the outperformer within or, or multiple subsectors sometimes. And then I'm gonna look at every one of those stocks within that universe. And I'm looking for the ones that's going to create a risk reward that is ridiculously favored for me, right? So I'm going to potentially lose a little bit of money, but my gains will by far outpace the potential loss that I would have, right? That's what we talk about, risk-reward, right? Small risk, big reward. That's the goal. And so we're looking for things that are really skewed into our favor here. Um, so hope you guys learned something from this. Hopefully it was helpful for everyone out there. Um, and, uh, and hope you have a good day.